Ah, the legend of Tone Hedge. <laughs> Tone Hedge. Uh, hey, guys, yes. welcome to that fellow show down here. Mick here. Hello. Hello, indeed. Um, right. Uh, we're doing pedal jams. Uh, before we do, just want to quickly mention, uh, oh, guys, man. head on to the... Um, you like that? I do. I just... The, the little metal things that stick yeah, up. Yeah, I know. I, they're <sighs> evil. Evil and nasty. Uh, yes, just just to mention uh, that pedalshowstore.com, um, T-shirts and all that sort of stuff there. That's how we finance the show. Uh, we don't take money from any yes, of these guys. we don't take any money from any manufacturers, so that's how we do it. We yes. sell T-shirts. Yes, so if you want to head over and there have a look, that'd be great. Okay, let's crack on. What do we have today, Mick? <laughs> We've got the Green Carrot Pedals Comfortably Plum. We have the PDF-1X by Stone Def. We have the Boss MD-200. And the TC Electronic Flashback Times 4. Nice. Better. Uh, there is a really nice colour scheme thing going on today. I like it. I like Hues it. Hues of blues. Mm. Ah, very good. Yeah, obviously the PDF's a bit silver, but that, you know, that could be a blue hue as well if, uh, if you're a colourist. If you squint. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dan referred to uh, Tone Hedge. Tone earlier. Hedge. The legend of Tone Demons. Hedge. Um, Probably there will be a clip in that explains that about now. So would that be the legend of Extractiver? The legend of Tone Hedge. <gasps> uh, explaining this guitar, it's a guitar uh, that, yeah, well, that's as, not, as much as we need to say about that. Um, what sort of guitar is it, Mick? Tell it's me. a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. Yeah, it is. That's on a kind of a semi-long-term loan to me. So the more and what a magnificent beast it is. Yeah, more more about that in uh, in other vlogs and videos. But yeah, that's As what Mick it is. Mounts his spectacular steed. Yes, I'm trying not to be too smiley about it, but stop it. It's pretty spectacular. It's... Right, <clears throat> comfortably the plum. Then has this got anything to do with um, old Davy G? Oh, I reckon it might. So. Two circuits in there. On the right-hand side, we have the Ram's Head Big Buff circuit. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, with a couple of level options on the switch. Right. And then on the left-hand side, I'll let you guess what that one is. Um, uh, some sort of colour driver. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, two of David G's favourite pedals, and you put them on together, and you have shrungage and Well, now I'm lovely. interested. No, I'm interested. Well, there it is. Amplifiers today are a two-rock classic reverb signature, my amp and the Morgan Dual 20. I'm pulling her out. Yeah. Uh, we had Simon Jarrett in last week and he was playing this guitar and he made it sound so good and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I've I've got to spend some time with this guitar because I do love it. It's it's great. Um, yes. I'll just say as a quick tangent, have you noticed how lightly Simon picks? And exact only literally I'll, never hits the guitar no, hard. No. And he has then he has dynamics. Mm. And it's like, yeah. 
I'm, re- I'm working on that. It's really hard. I get so excited to play. I go, <laughs> and, and I can't not hit pick really hard. I'm, I'm really trying to just. I sound like an idiot, but I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm, in, I am, I'm interested in this. Um, when I think of Davy G and you say, you know, Ram's head fuzz and then a color driver, Mm-hmm. That sounds like a lot of gain to me, and I just don't associate him with that. So maybe we can educate ourselves, even sure. though we know that's what he used. Well, the the one interesting thing about the Ram's Head, and this is my big test for any Ram's Head Ram's Head Muff clone, is how they work at low gain, because the really good Ram's Head Big Muffs have this spectacular sound at low gain. Then let we start there. Okay, I'm going to turn the gain down. Sus. Right. All right. Ready. Uh, so you heard the amps, the um, the Morgan is breaking up a little bit, actually. So the the switches at the side, just yeah. um, find out which one has the least amount of noise. Right, let's try that one. Started off with the gain on zero, right, and then ended up at twelve o'clock. Okay, wow. So, I, yeah, your low gain Rams head not really there, I don't think, is it? Well, but at unless there's an internal trimmer or something. No, but it does sound very sweet. Let me try it with a strap. I, mean, I can't. I can't work out what the switch does. I think it's different mid range um, sure. frequencies. Now, okay. what we have discovered about this lovely old Strat is that it it does have brilliant um, volume control and it. It cleans up oh. exceptionally well, so we'll see if that if that is the case here. Okay, so let me. Where's the gain? Uh, the, this, this one. one. Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's the sustain side. Okay, of course. Okay. It is there because it's just that little area. Oh, it was between... on zero for the Les Paul. Yeah, right. Oh, really? Yeah, it was okay. r- right off. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I've turned the guitar down as well, you see? Sure. Thank you. 
we could keep listening to that all day because it? it is totally magic. It's, isn't that killer? What's the other side? The other side is the uh, overdriver. Yeah. So that gives us... really keeps that crazy top yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. You better get making a lot of those. Man alive. Better get making a lot of those. Wow. I think they're going to sell trillions of those. That's amazing. Okay. Next. Uh, PDF1X from Stone Deaf. Hello, Luke uh, and Keith at Stone Deaf. Um, British company. This pedal's famous because Josh Homme used it, the first iteration thereof. Okay. Um, and it is a... Uh, distortion overdrive, but the thing about it is the way it affects the mid range. Yes, as far as I understand. Yes, yeah, so it has that uh, the, the parametric EQ. Okay, so the, the four knobs on top. The interesting thing about this pedal is the gain control is actually an internal trimmer that you set and forget. Yeah. All right. So we have volume control, and the volume control is if you re remember the original, which. We have somewhere. There was no master volume. There's was no there from, master volume, remember, and it was crazy loud. Crazy, crazy loud. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and we had to put a volume pedal after it. Remember yeah. that to control the amount. Uh, of it was yeah, yeah, Crazy. Yeah. Which is fine if you're going into a um, overdriven amp because that amount of volume is just going to push the amp. It won't in increase the volume of the amp too much. But if it's going into a clean amp, obviously that's a big problem. Sure. Sure. So now there's a master volume. So now there's a master volume. Happy days. Now these are special edition as well. I think these are special edition. There's two hundred of these. Right. So. These three knobs here control the EQ. So we have the height control. Now this will either boost or cut by 20 dB, all right? Then we can set the frequency, and then we have the five position switch, which gives you the bandwidth or the Q of that cut, all right? So if you, if you play. So you hear when I go to the, to the upper frequencies, I, I can either give it a larger cue, which is boosting a lot, it's, it's those frequencies moving back down to the mid range, or a smaller cue, which is just boosting the top end. So from here, so this is the this is the larger cue.
Uh, Taylor. Presumably, this frequency knob is going to allow me to find, if you play a note, yep. I'm presumably going to find where it feeds back, yeah? Cool. I was trying to find others. <laughs> yeah, there are other yeah. fifths. Yeah, yeah. We've got um, a major third there. That's nice. That's cool. So that's really, really super sculpty, isn't it? Super sculpty. Can we try some scooper sets? Yes. I'm just going to see what. Producer's dream. Producer's dream. Yep. Absolutely. Just get that, get that mid band. Make it as wide or as narrow as you want. Yep. Or get that band of frequencies. Make it as wide or as narrow as you want, and scoop it or push it. You can see why old homie boy loves that, can't uh, you? Homie boy. Or loved it. Can't honk him. Can you honk him? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we used to play that. Two, three, four. <laughs> it's amazing what you can't remember. It's amazing what you can't remember. It is amazing what I can't remember. Right, it's Boss MD200. In the 200 series, um, we've done this before, but it is about the, the width of two. Sorry, we haven't done the pedal before. We've explained its physical size. It's about the width of two compact series pedals and about two thirds the size of the 500 series. So it's very pedal board friendly has four onboard presets or a manual mode and a bunch of other stuff. The preset we heard at the start was you playing the uh, rotary. Sounded yes. very nice. Yeah, I didn't, we didn't, that's not, wasn't the preset. We just dialed that in. Or did you? Yeah. Let's start there, shall we, Dan? Let's start there. Because um, a fan of rotaries, Daniel and I are, um, as would be the case for any multi-modulation pedal, what you get is some obvious stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you get some less obvious stuff. So the parameter, the three parameter knobs, might affect anything from tone to uh, the speed of the horn, the upper horn, the oh, lower yeah, horn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then what I didn't realise was we couldn't make it quiet. The depth knob in this case happens to be overdrive. For example, I, I guess it's still in the same setting, is it? Should be. Good. So that's cool. So we know it does rotary speaker um, nicely. The the tap tempo in this particular uh, as a fast setting slope. is a fast yeah. slope, which yeah. is exactly what you, I love it when stuff like that makes sense. 
straight out of the box yep. and you don't have to do loads of tweaking in the manual. Right, let's have a listen to some of these others then. Daniel Chorus, tell me what you think of this chorus. Okay. Uh, here you are. Oh. Sorry, keep going. How you getting on there's, there, mate? Yeah, some cool sounds there. How are you getting on there? Yeah. It's, it takes, as always, digital modulation. You've really got to get in there and fiddle. Really, really got to fiddle. They never sound... They never sound killer out of the box. And, and, and if that sounds like a dismissive comment, go back and watch our where we've, where we've compared every decent, well, most decent digital modulation multi-effects with the real thing. And there's just something about the filtering in the top end, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I bet it's cool. Look, there's... I was flapping around with the parameter knobs. Some of them were tone knobs. Some of them were panner knobs because sure. it's stereo, I assume. Yep. Yeah. So uh, clearly more reading of the manual would be good, but 
I don't know. We made the DD200 sound Epic. immense straight out of the box. Epic. We, meant, we made the EQ200 sound easy peasy. You know, yeah. It's just really obvious what it does. That takes a long while, and I'm sure if you got used to it, it would be cool, but... You could do several shows worth on just that, getting yeah. into it and, yeah. But l let's hand on heart and say we're never going to love it compared to a, a analog version of, of each of those effects. Sure. I did I did like the, the rotary sound. I thought that yeah. sounded quite good. Yeah. But, you know... Well, it's pretty hard to get an analog rotary, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> we, but th remember, we had, the, yeah. we had that. It's yeah. like... Uh, and our, our favourite was a toss-up between the um, Mini Vent 2 and the Strymon um, Lex. Yeah, yeah. That was killer. And uh, But even then, you turn it, turn the real Leslie on and it's like, yeah, it's, it's not even the same game. It's not yeah. even the same game, is it, yeah, at yeah. that point? Anyway, so yeah, so if you need a load of modulation sounds in a pedal, simple to use-ish. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, uh, flashback times four. This is exciting because... Flashback, TC Electronics Flashback has to be one of the most popular kind of do-it-all compact-sized yeah. delay pedals in the world well, ever, right? Yes. I remember there was a period there where TC Electronic were the biggest seller of effects pedals in the world. They overtook Boss, didn't they? They did. They, they did. They came in and said to Boss, thank you very much, we'll have that market share. Yes. And ever since Boss have been on a real giddy up to yeah to regain that market yeah. haven't they and 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 they've done spectacularly well oh. the great thing about this so you've used the original um uh flashback you used that for ages i did and there's a couple of sounds in there that you really liked and so I also and that's used the mini one yes and josh scott has got a josh yes uh so josh smith josh smith josh smith has his um, his we can we can honk Josh Scott as well. Yeah. Funny enough, uh, but Josh Smith has got his tone print and he used that for his sound. They they sound great. Really good analog dry through. Um, really nice. But then they came out with these mash switches, which is basically an expression pedal in the foot switch itself. And I saw that and I thought, man, you guys are brilliant. I oh, you know, it's such a clever thing to do because the expression pedal's a pain in the butt. You know, we should say that you can put an expression pedal into the PDF One X as well to control the frequency, so you can do wah. Oh, cool! On it and right. other things. Yeah, all Sorry. those those DJ breakdowns. Yeah, but... yeah, 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 yeah. That, they're right. Half time. Oh, I apologise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the mash foot switch. So, for example, if we uh, if you get play a note for me. That's what you always wanted your 1961 strap to do. Wasn't it, it? it absolutely. <laughs> can I hear? Can I hear that again? That was just ace. I'm going to play a note like you asked me okay. to. So we're changing the pressure on the foot switch. So like this one here, if I press it really hard, it slows it down. If I press it gradually, it sorry. If I press it really hard, it speeds the speeds it up. If I just press it gradually, it slows it down. So have a listen to this. <laughs> so if I just lean on a little bit, it goes, Ooh, when I press really hard, <laughs> really cool. So, but that's a speed thing. You can assign those, let's say, you can assign that to a fax level. Yeah. So you just want to like a, have like an infinite, you know, delay or whatever, just lean on the foot switch. Really, really cool. It is very cool, yeah. And you've got that basically times three. You've got three of those presets there. Or presumably, why is it called times four? Select presets one to three or four to six, depending on the bank uh, one or two setting. Yep. So it should be called the flashback times three. Well, six. it takes the space of four flashbacks. Okay, okay. Like People that? have moaned about that. They've said, oh, it looks great, but my God, it's so big. If you want four foot switches on a pedal, it has to be that big. Yeah. Pretty much in order for it to make any sort of sense on a pedal board and be, sure. be functional. And if you don't want that many uh, foot switches on a pedal, buy the Boss DD200. 
or some other yeah. multifunction yeah. delay that doesn't have four foot switches. Yeah. But don't moan about this having lots of foot switches. That's the whole point of it. The whole point of it is that it has easily selectable presets for idiots like me who can't deal with switching in and out of preset mode. Sure. So the great thing, you've got six locations to store sounds. Mix mode. Mix yeah. mode. And so you can find, your, let's say I want to put a reverse delay in, um, in here. I go to that preset, get my reverse delay. So if you play for us for a bit. Kill the dry sound in there. Uh, yes. Reverse, I don't know if I can do that as a setting though. Reverse delay always sounds great when there's no no drying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so once you've got your sound, you just pull this down here, and then and there you're stored. And it's in there forevermore. If you go to bank two, how do you get to bank two? You press up and quit lights go green. Yeah. Nice. So you yeah. know if you're in bank one or bank two. Exactly. So after all that, after the mash switches, the crazy reverse delays, can it just do a nice delay? Yeah. How many delay engines have we got? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten delay engines yep. and six tone prints. Cool. So uh what would you like? Is there a drum delay? Uh, there, isn't. I, there isn't. There isn't a drum delay. Ooh. Is there a 2290 with mod? There is. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> flapping about now. Analog delays. Yes. Digital delays. Yes. Stereo if you yeah. want it. Tape, ping pong, lo-fi. Yeah, 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 and the yeah. looper, of course, which is very nice. Very cool. Ah, uh, looper. Mm. Come on, let me see if I can work this out then. Loop. Yep. Record, play, pause, and play once. Ready? Yep.
Classic. That's for you, Mark Latiri. <laughs> Right, um, let's boogie. <laughs> We've got a backing track. We're going to play some of this stuff over some of this noise. Um, G, B flat, C, D, resolves to F, kind of. There's an E flat in there too. Cool. Happy? Very happy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 